Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Despite being one of the most instantly recognisable groups of modern reptiles, the turtles and their evolutionary origins have long been a thorn in the side of paleontologists. Given their highly specialised and derived body plans, with greatly expanded ribs that form a protective carapace, you would think that identifying ancient relatives of these animals in the fossil record would be straightforward. However, the opposite has proven to be the case. For centuries, naturalists and paleontologists had no good idea as to how turtles, known formerly as testudines, were related to other reptiles. Good fossil material was lacking, with the oldest known identifiable forms from the late Triassic already strongly resembling their modern descendants. Before the advent of genetic testing, it was long assumed that testudines were closely related to the extinct parareptiles, a successful lineage of early sauropsids that also produced bulky, slow-moving herbivorous forms with heavy armour. Parareptiles also tended to lack openings in the skull, which is also the case in turtles, which was thought to point to a close relationship between the two. However, during the late 20th century, theories regarding turtle origins began to shift. Morphological studies suggested that testudines were lepidosaurs, being close to lizards, snakes and tuataras, while the vast majority of studies that include DNA analysis as their focal point found them to be nearer to archosaurs. Also, new fossils came to light, particularly from earlier in the Triassic, that proved highly important to this debate. Indeed, by the early 2020s, an overall, though still controversial, consensus appears to be emerging that testudines are close relatives of the Sauropterygians, the lineage that includes the plesiosaurs, placodonts and others, with both forming the clade pantestudines. In turn, pantestudines has been found to be the sister group to Archosauromorpha, with a 2022 study by Tiago Samoes et al. finding both genetic and, for the first time, detailed anatomical evidence that confirms this placement. This paper found that turtles and archosaurs share two notable anatomical similarities, namely the possession of a sagittal crest on, on the supraoccipital bone at the rear of the skull, and the lack of a foramen on the humerus. This suggests that the creation of the combined clade Archelosauria is indeed valid, with modern turtles being the closest relatives of birds and crocodilians with these groups sharing a common ancestor that lived approximately 265 million years ago during the Permian. However, controversy still remains concerning which fossil reptile should be considered stem turtles. At present, the most ancient animal sometimes considered to be a member of Pantastudines is the genus Eunotosaurus, from the middle Permian of South Africa. This stout, 30 cm long reptile possessed wide flat ribs that formed broad plates that appear quite similar to the carapace of modern turtles. Although known only from partial remains, Eunotosaurus is theorised to have resembled a stocky, broad-bodied lizard, with large feet, powerful forelimbs, and a tail notably longer than in any modern turtle. These strange anatomical features most likely represent adaptations for a fossorial lifestyle, helping this slow-moving animal to both dig for food and to hide from predators. If this genus was indeed an early pantastudine, then a digging lifestyle may have led to the origins of the iconic turtle shell. However, it is currently far from certain whether Eunotosaurus was a relative of turtles or not, with some recent studies classifying it as a parareptile, a basal diapsid, or a small cassisaur. This uncertainty is due to the fact that superficially turtle-like body plans have developed multiple times within sauropsid reptiles with similar body shapes emerging in smaller pariasaurs, cassisaurs, and especially among certain marine placodonts. Therefore, the identity of Eunotosaurus will remain debated until more complete fossils are found. A more definitive candidate for the oldest known pantestudine is the Middle Triassic genus Papacellis, which native to what is now Germany approximately 240 million years ago. With a name meaning grandfather turtle, this was also a small lizard-like animal, measuring about 20 centimetres or 8 inches long. Like Eunotosaurus, the tail was relatively elongated, while the skull was pointed, housing large orbits and containing small teeth in the jaws, unlike modern turtles, which are beaked and toothless. There are also two pairs of temporal fenestrae at the back of the skull, 
much like other diapsid reptiles, but unlike testudines, which have solid skulls with no openings. This demonstrates that all Chelonians evolved from derived neodiapsid ancestors, a fact confirmed by genetic studies, which places them as close to Archosauromorpha. Several turtle-like features of the skeleton are also present, such as the expanded ribs and gastralia that appear to be the forerunners of a shell. In addition, the gastralia belly ribs are tightly packed and occasionally fused together, anticipating the rigid plastron of living turtles. The claystone beds in which fossils of Papakellus were found was likely deposited in a lake setting, suggesting that this animal may have been semi-aquatic. Although Papakellus lacked a fully formed shell like modern turtles, its thickened bones may have helped reduce the body's buoyancy, making it a more adept swimmer. However, otherwise the anatomy has no signs of a fully aquatic lifestyle and only a few adaptations for swimming. In addition, a histological study found that its limb bones had a thick outer wall and small open medullary cavity, like only a few aquatic reptiles and completely unlike modern aquatic turtles. Moving on in time to the late Triassic, thankfully pantestudine fossils start to become more common. In most phylogenetic studies, the next most basal member of this clade was the Chinese genus Eorhynchocelis, which lived approximately 230 million years ago. This animal possessed an odd mixture of basal and derived characteristics, with a beaked skull that resembled that of modern turtles, although it did still have teeth at the back of the jaws but lacked a true shell, retaining a more traditionally lizard-like body plan complete with a long tail. It was also much larger than Papakellis, measuring up to 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet long, and inhabited a warm coastal region when alive, with the animal swimming about in shallow waters and combing the mud for food. In this respect, it would have somewhat resembled a marine iguana, albeit with a wider body and beaked snout. The skull also retained the ancestral diapsid condition, again demonstrating that turtles were derived neodiapsids as opposed to parareptiles. The mixed traits of Eorhynchocelis suggest that the development of characteristic testudine features occurred in a piecemeal fashion and not all at once, in a similar situation to early relatives of birds. A slightly younger genus, Odontocelis, was also native to late Triassic of China about 220 million years ago, and can be considered a transitional form between basal pan-testudines and true turtles of the order Testudinata. This was a smaller animal than Eorhynchocelis, measuring up to 40 centimeters long, and was also aquatic to some degree, with its remains found in shallow marine deposits. In addition, a paratype specimen of this genus showed evidence of bone damage consistent with decompression sickness, suggesting that Odontocelis was capable of diving in search of food. It would also have more closely resembled modern turtles, with the animal possessing a bony plastron on the underside of the body, forming the bottom part of what would later become a proper shell. It apparently lacked a carapace on its back, however, with this area being covered by soft skin instead, with this meaning that Odontocelis was a turtle with a half shell. Insert Ninja Turtles reference here. This suggests that the plastron evolved in a marine context, probably in order to protect the belly from predators lunging from below, with the carapace only later developing when these animals transitioned back to living on land. The genus also possessed teeth and confusingly lacked a beak, unlike the seemingly more basal Eorhynchocelis. Interestingly, by the late Triassic, true members of Testudinata had appeared, living alongside their more basal cousins. These animals are defined by the presence of a true shell, composed of both a carapace and a plastron that protects most of the body aside from the head, legs and tail. This lineage appears quite suddenly towards the end of the Triassic, with evidence in the form of trackways hinting that this clade may have diverged much earlier during the early Triassic. Given the rarity of pantestudines in Permian and Triassic deposits, I would not be surprised if this was indeed the case with many extinct forms still waiting to be described. The oldest and one of the most basal members of Testudinata was the genus Progenocelis, which was for a long time considered to be the most ancient relative of living turtles so far known. First described in 1887, this one meter long animal was native to what is now Germany, Switzerland, Greenland and Thailand approximately 210 million years ago, 
and would have appeared very similar to its modern relatives at a glance. The shell was relatively wide and flat, helping to provide better protection from predators, with the relatively long tail shielded by spiky projections of bone and terminating in a club. Proganochelis also possessed a primitive beak-like snout, equipped with some remaining denticles on the palate, although these were quite small, suggesting that this genus was largely herbivorous, unlike the more basal pantastudines. Despite being a fairly well-known fossil animal, there has been extensive debate regarding the ecological habits of Proganochelis and other late Triassic stem turtles. It has been regarded as either entirely terrestrial or semi-aquatic, while the living genus was probably capable of inhabiting either environment, not being as specialised as living testudines. The close relative, Proterochersis, was also native to the late Triassic of Europe, inhabiting what is now Poland and Germany. Fossils show that Proterochersis was a turtle of moderate size, with a domed shell similar to modern tortoises. Stem testudines such as these persisted for a surprisingly long time, being quite diverse during the early Jurassic and into the Cretaceous, with one family, the Myelaneids, surviving in Australia and New Caledonia into the Pleistocene and Holocene respectively, going extinct as recently as 3,000 years ago. Meanwhile, the two major modern turtle groups, the Pleurodiaes and the Cryptodiaes, first appeared and diverged during the late Jurassic and quickly found success during the Cretaceous spreading all over the world and eventually surviving the KPG extinction event at the end of the period. However, that is a story best left for another time. In conclusion then, the evolutionary history of turtles is long and complex, possessing many twists and turns. Thankfully, recent discoveries are helping to throw light on a subject that was once very poorly understood, although we still have a fairly murky knowledge of the very earliest Pantestudines which probably diverged from their archosauromorph cousins during the second half of the Permian. Only time will tell if older members of this clade can be found to help fill in the remaining gaps. Thanks for watching everyone. The next video will be focusing on the evolutionary history of the tylopod artiodactyls and their closest relatives, some of which were downright bizarre. See you again soon. Cheerio.